So, in this uh, lecture, we are going to uh, discuss uh, psychrometry. Um, okay, so, what do we mean by the word psychrometry? Basically, uh, psychrometry is the study of the changes in the state and content of moist or humid air. And the primary application where psychrometry is uh, uh, applied uh, is in heating, ventilation and air conditioning that is HVAC. Um, if you uh, go into um, say any uh, big uh, building or even for that matter in automobiles uh, today, you have excellent temperature control. So, you adjust the uh, temperature and um, uh, you are ensured that not only is the temperature uh, set to the level you want, the humidity is also adjusted. That is something that you do not see, but you feel. The humidity level is also adjusted so that you are comfortable. So, merely setting the temperature uh, does not ensure comfort. For example, uh, in India, uh, you may always want to set the uh, temperature to be say 22 degrees Celsius. Okay? But uh, dry air at 22 degrees Celsius actually makes uh, uh, people generally very uncomfortable. The air is simply too dry. For example, example, like the air in, <clears throat> in an aircraft. Okay? So, uh, if you uh, go on uh, long distance flights, then the dry air can actually cause uh, redness of the eyes or uh, some nose bleeds for some people and so on. So, dry air at low temperature is also uh, is not very good. Okay? Now, at the same time, if the uh, humidity level is high, that is also not very comfortable. Although temperature may be okay, but a uh, high humidity level is also not good because you feel sticky. Again, there is a sense of discomfort. Okay? So, for, uh, for optimal uh, uh, feeling, you should uh, set the temperature and the humidity at optimal levels. Okay? So, not just temperature, but both temperature and humidity must be optimal. Okay? So, psychrometry essentially deals with that. Okay? So, essentially it uh, looks at the state of uh, moist air. The, the, which means air with water vapor in it and also the content of moist air. So, if the air is too dry, then we may want to add more water vapor to the air to make it more comfortable. If the air is too humid, we may want to remove some water vapor again to uh, make the uh, environment more uh, comfortable. Okay? So, comfort depends on uh, both temperature as well as humidity and that is what we are going to uh, study in this module. Okay? How uh, temperature, state of the air and content or in other words temperature and humidity of air can be controlled in these sorts of applications. So, if you go to big buildings, the temperature and humidity are automatically controlled by the central air conditioning system. Automobiles also nowadays have very sophisticated systems where you can set the temperature and everything is regulated. So, you have a very good sense of comfort. Okay? So, we will see how, uh, uh, how uh, this uh, effect is achieved. In other words, how do we uh, control the temperature and the moisture content in the, uh, in the air? Number one, how are these quantities measured so that appropriate control actions can be initiated. So, we will look at both these, uh, both these aspects in this uh, module. In addition to HVAC, uh, psychrometry is also of importance in drying and also in cooling towers used in thermal power plants. We will uh, look at these applications, but by and large it is uh, used in HVAC. Okay. So, the next question that arises is what is moist air? Okay. What do we mean by moist air or humid air? Because when you say moist air or humid air, uh, in colloquial terms this sort of gives an impression that you know the air is too moist or too humid. Okay. But that is not the correct uh, uh, impression that one should have. Okay. So, if you take the air in this room or air in the room that you are in, the air uh, contains primarily as you know O2 and N2. Okay. In addition, it also contains water vapor. Okay. There is some amount of water vapor in the air and that is colloquially referred to as humidity. Okay. So, humid air does not mean there is a lot of water vapor in the air or moist air does not mean there is a lot of water vapor in the air. Moist air or humid air refers to the fact that we have <coughs> air just dry air plus some amount of water vapor. Okay? The amount of water vapor again uh, is what we are actually going to uh, quantify and try to control in practical applications. So, let us take uh, say air at a temperature of uh, 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. Okay? So, it contains a certain amount of water vapor at the same temperature, 
but depending on the amount of water it is at its own partial pressure P V. Okay. So, let us look at the state of the water vapor and a, a PV a TV diagram like this. So, you can see that the water vapor is at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and at some partial pressure. Okay. Note that it lies on the uh, superheated side or in other words the water vapor is superheated because the partial pressure is so low because the amount of water vapor that is in the air is uh, very, very small. Okay, but still important for psychrometric applications, but it is generally very small, which means that the partial pressure is uh, very small, which means that at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius for such a low partial pressure, the water vapor exists as uh, a superheated vapor or in the superheated state. Okay. Now, as we increase the amount of uh, water vapor in the air, its partial pressure increases and uh, so you can see that uh, this is the isobar corresponding to the partial pressure of the water vapor. So, this is the isobar corresponding to the partial pressure of the water vapor and as we increase the amount of water, the pressure increases. So, the isobar moves in this direction and as we decrease the amount of uh, water vapor in the air, the isobar or corresponding to the partial pressure moves in this direction. Okay. So, the water vapor in the room is uh, superheated on account of the fact that its partial pressure is quite small. Once again, the word superheated uh, in normal connotation usually implies high temperature. When you say something is superheated, immediately you know you have uh, steam that comes into mind and you know temperature is very high. But uh, that need not be the case. So, here we have air at room temperature, the water vapor is also at room temperature 25 degrees Celsius, but because its partial pressure is so low that it exists in the superheated state okay, that it is important to keep that in mind. Now, typical uh, psychrometric applications uh, uh, experience uh, more or less constant pressure around one atmosphere or maybe slightly higher than that. And the range of temperature that we are looking at is usually between 0 degree Celsius and about 60 degree Celsius. Okay. So, for these conditions, uh, for these conditions, um, so 60 degree Celsius, the isotherm corresponding to 60 degree Celsius is here and the isotherm corresponding to 0 degree Celsius is here. So, this is the range of uh, uh, temperatures that we are looking at and for this range of temperatures, usually uh, the uh, water vapor exists as a uh, superheated uh, vapor and we may uh, essentially assume the water vapor to be an ideal gas as uh, shown here. Notice that uh, this uh, uh, illustration was actually discussed in the previous course when we talked about uh, uh, properties of uh, uh, pure substances, particularly uh, steam and R134A. So, roughly uh, this uh, shaded area denotes uh, the region in which the vapor obeys the ideal gas equation of state to within uh, 10 percent. Okay. So, for the uh, range of temperatures that we encounter in psychrometric applications, the water vapor may safely uh, be assumed to be an ideal gas which obeys P V equal to uh, m r t where V is the volume or P time specific volume equal to r t. And we will assume that uh, in this course and that is a very safe engineering assumption to make. Okay. There is no need to use the tables. The departure from the tables is very small. So, we can essentially use that and we will use that. So, these are the two important points that the water vapor in the room is superheated on account of its partial pressure being very small and the water vapor is superheated and we will assume it to be an ideal gas which obeys P V equal to R T. So, moist air itself may be treated as a mixture of two ideal gases. Once we say that we are going to treat the water vapor as an ideal gas, we may take the uh, moist air to be a mixture of two ideal gases, dry air which is usually denoted with the subscript uh, A and water vapor denoted with the subscript V. Okay. So, the air in this room is uh, taken to be a mixture of two ideal gases, dry air itself and water vapor. 
Note that dry air itself is a mixture of two ideal gases O2 and N2, but we need not worry about that because the composition does not change. So, we treat that as a single component uh, gas namely dry air. So, the air in this room is uh, comprised of dry air and water vapor. And this enormously simplifies the thermodynamic analysis of psychrometric applications. Okay. Again, bear in mind that um, we have already uh, discussed uh, or rather uh, it is a mixture of ideal gases, calculation of properties, ideal gas equation of state, uh, mixture molecular weight, all these concepts have been discussed in great detail in the uh, previous course. Okay. So, the no new concepts are being introduced here. The only special thing is that moist air is a mixture of just two ideal gases. Okay. Again, bear in mind that um, this course deals with applications of concepts that we uh, that were taught in the previous course. Okay. So, this is an application of uh, mixture of ideal gases okay. and first law both uh, non-flow process as well as steady flow process and so on. So, we are just applying the concept of a mixture of ideal gases to a very interesting practical mechanical engineering application or mechanical engineering applications namely HVAC, drying, cooling tower and so on. Okay. So, for the mixture we may write P equal to NRT over V where N is the number of moles of the uh, mixture. Okay. For the dry air we may write its own equation of state dry air e P A equal to number of moles of dry air times R T over V. Notice that we are using the Dalton's model. So, all the components occupy the same volume and are at the same temperature only their pressures are different. Okay. And for the water vapor again we may write because we are assuming it to be an ideal gas we may write P V equal to N V R T over V. And since we have only two components, we may write the total pressure of mixture is nothing but the sum of the partial pressures of its components. So, P A plus P V and the total number of moles is also the sum of the number of moles of the individual species. And by definition, the um, uh, partial pressure is nothing but mole fraction um, times the mixture pressure and so that is we can use that for uh, both. Uh, PV and PA. Okay. So, uh, if you are not familiar with this, I uh, suggest that you uh, look at the video uh, in the first course which deals with mixture of ideal gases and then uh, revise these concepts before you proceed. So, the first uh, new term that we are going to introduce, I am sorry, introduce in uh, psychrometry is the humidity ratio. Okay. The humidity ratio denoted omega is defined as the ratio of the mass of the water vapor to mass of dry air in a given sample. Okay. So, M V over M A is defined as the humidity ratio. Notice that we um, uh, in psychrometry it is always important to write uh, kg vapor over kg dry air because otherwise this quantity is dimensionless because both numerator and denominator have units of mass, but it sometimes gets lost in the development if you do not uh, 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 use this. What happens is you know you sort of do not realize that you are talking about M V or masses of different substances in the numerator and denominator. Okay? So, it is always a good practice to denote uh, this as M V over M A kg vapor per kg dry air. Now, we can write this since um, by definition molecular weight is uh, mass divided by number of moles, we may write M V as N V times M V and similarly for the dry air. And if I divide the numerator and denominator by N in this case, for instance, if I, uh, if I do this. So, I divide the numerator and denominator by N, then N V over N may be written as Y V and N A over N may be written as Y A, this is nothing but the mole fraction. And since there are only two components in the mixture, right, the sum of all mole fractions 
as we uh, learnt in the previous course, sum of all mole fractions should sum up to 1. In this case, there are only 2 components. So, y a plus y v equal to 1 and I can replace y a in the denominator with 1 minus y v. And I can also write replace y v with the partial pressure like this. And remember, we have, uh, we have said that the mixture pressure is the sum of the partial pressures, right. And this is um, uh, we may use the mole fraction to define partial pressure like this. So, which means I can write uh, omega in this form also. Now, if I substitute the uh, value for molecular weight of water vapor 18 and for air 28.97, we get this to be omega equal to 0 0.622 times P v over P minus P v kg vapor per kg dry air. So, this is an expression that we will use quite extensively. This is a humidity ratio. Another term that is used um, in the context of um, uh, synchrometry and HVAC application is relative humidity denoted by the Greek letter phi. Now, uh, from practical experience, uh, you may uh, probably have uh, noticed the following. Let us say that we have a certain amount of water vapor in the air in this room and we keep adding more and more water vapor and beyond a certain point, uh, you see that it is no longer possible to add any more water vapor. The air, the air appears to be saturated. Okay? Now, saturated is used colloquially here, but there is actually a much more specific uh, connotation for saturated. I will explain that in a minute. But the air appears to be quote unquote saturated. You cannot add any more uh, water vapor to the air in the room. So, if you try to add any more water vapor, it simply condenses back to liquid water. It does not uh, stay in the vapor form or superheated form. Okay. So, that means that there is a maximum to the amount of water vapor that this air can hold at this temperature. We have not changed the temperature of the, uh, uh, of the air in the, in the room. So, the temperature remains constant. We try to add more and more water, which means that the partial pressure of the uh, water vapor increases and the partial pressure of air decreases, but the mixture pressure remains the same. Okay. So, uh, so, we keep adding more and more water vapor. And it appears that there is a maximum amount of water vapor that we can add at the given temperature. Okay? So, relative humidity is uh, defined as the ratio of the mole fraction of the water vapor in the given sample to the maximum mole fraction of water vapor that can be present at the same temperature. So, the, the air at this temperature can only hold so much of water. So, that is the maximum amount of water vapor that the air can hold at this temperature. So, the ratio of y v over y v saturated at that pressure and temperature is called relative humidity. Okay? So, <clears throat> so y v we may write in terms of uh, the mixture pressure like this and uh, as i said the mixture pressure remains the same so when the mixture appears to be saturated the uh, mole fraction of water vapor is a different value it is likely to be higher because we have added more uh, water vapor so y v sat times p is the uh, partial pressure of water vapor at that state okay so the ratio comes out to be p v over p sat of t Okay. Remember, <clears throat> once the, uh, the water vapor, amount of water vapor reaches its maximum value, then what we can say is, we say air is saturated. What we actually mean by that is that the partial pressure of water vapor is equal to the saturation pressure corresponding to the temperature. So, although the word saturated is used colloquially, um, it happens to be correct even in an engineering sense. Okay? So, when the maximum amount of water is present in the air, we say the air is saturated. What is precisely meant by that is that the partial pressure of water vapor, the amount of water vapor is such that the partial pressure of water vapor is equal to the saturation pressure of water corresponding to that temperature, the mixture temperature. Okay? So, that is called relative humidity. So, relative humidity 100 percent implies that the air is fully saturated. 
any value less than that we can say the air is not saturated there is room for adding more water. So, if it is uh, too humid, so we say the relative humidity is high then you feel sticky. So, 80 percent, 90 percent, 100 percent you feel sticky. If the relative humidity is 20 or 30 percent and the temperature is also in a, a reasonable range then we feel comfortable. Okay. So, relative humidity measures not only the amount of water vapor present, but also the amount that can be present in relation to the temperature. So, it brings in both the effect, the mole fraction of uh, amount of water vapor and the temperature. Whereas, the uh, humidity ratio talks only about the amount of water vapor, not the temperature of the uh, mixture. Okay. So, relative humidity is a very important uh, term that is used in psychrometric applications and also uh, if you listen to weather forecast, I would say temperature predicted tomorrow is uh, let us say 26 degrees Celsius, relative humidity 50 percent. So, this is what is meant by relative humidity. Okay. Now, let us look at this in this uh, chart, let me just uh, clear some of these uh, lines here. So, let us say we have water vapor uh, at 25 degrees Celsius and uh, uh, certain partial pressure. Okay. Let us say that the partial pressure is less than the maximum value and now if I <coughs> add water, more water vapor to this air while keeping the temperature constant, the, uh, uh, the state of the water vapor moves like this because as I add water, if the partial pressure increases and the state uh, the uh, partial pressure keeps moving like this. So, we keep uh, moving along the uh, isotherm into different isobars okay? because we are keeping the temperature constant, we are moving along the isotherm and we can move along the isotherm until we reach this point. Okay? Notice that this state lies on the saturated vapor line. So, this is the saturated vapor line. So, this state lies on the saturated vapor line, we cannot add any more water beyond this point. If you do, the water will condense right back into a liquid. Okay? So, this corresponds to phi equal to 100 percent, that is a saturated state. So, the partial pressure corresponding to the given state which is PV divided by this pressure which is nothing but the saturation pressure corresponding to 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Notice that this is the saturation pressure corresponding to 25 degrees Celsius that is called the relative humidity corresponding to this state. So, relative humidity corresponding to this state is P V over P sat of 25 degrees Celsius. Another term uh, that is uh, used in connection uh, with the psychrometry is the so called dew point temperature. Okay. The dew point temperature is defined simply as the saturation temperature corresponding to the partial pressure of the water vapor. So, we have, uh, we have moist air at let us say 25 degrees Celsius and there is a certain amount of water vapor, so its partial pressure is PV. So, the saturation temperature corresponding to PV is called the dew point temperature. Okay. Now, let us try to look at this um, physically. So, uh, let us say that we take this uh, moist air which is at 25 degrees Celsius and without adding or removing any water, let us say that we cool the mixture which means that the partial pressure of the water vapor remains constant. So, we are uh, uh, as opposed to uh, constant temperature uh, process that uh, we looked at in connection with the relative humidity. Now, we are looking at a constant uh, pressure P V constant, mixture pressure also constant. So, we are looking at a constant pressure process for the water vapor. So, as I cool this, I am going to reach a certain uh, temperature at which point I reach the saturated vapor line. So, let us take a look at this in this uh, line. So, here I start from this state, right? I start from this state. And then at constant uh, pressure, uh, I move along this isobar like this until I reach this state point. 
So, once I reach this state point again it is on the saturated vapor line and if I lower it any further water will begin to condense. So, this temperature the corresponding temperature here this temperature is called the dew point temperature and that is nothing but the saturation temperature corresponding to P V. This is why um, you see dew or dew drops on grass and leaves in the early in the morning. Okay. So, the air contains a certain amount of water vapor uh, in the evening, there is no more evaporation. So, that is the maximum amount of vapor that you are going to see. Right. So, as the temperature begins to drop during the night, the amount of water vapor remains the same. Okay. The temperature begins to drop and then if it drops close to the dew point temperature during the night, you will start to see dew drops on leaves and other surfaces. Okay. If the amount of water late in the evening is sufficiently high and the temperature drops sufficiently uh, low during the night, then you will definitely see dew early in the morning. So, let us um, <coughs> uh, sum up some of the things that we have already said. Uh, as moist air is heated at constant pressure, it becomes drier. Okay? So, you can see this here. So, as we heat moist air at constant pressure, that means we are uh, uh, moving along in this direction. Okay, let me just change the color here. So, if I heat moist air at constant pressure, then I am moving along this isobar like this. So, as I keep moving up, uh, you can see that it becomes drier okay? because it is distant. So, let us say I heat it up to this point. It becomes drier because the uh, saturation state corresponding to this lies over here. This corresponds to phi equal to 100. So, this is phi equal to 100 for this state. So, as I move up here, you can see that here this state is closer to the saturated vapor line. Here it is far away from the saturated vapor line. So, as I heat air, moist air at a constant pressure, the air becomes drier. As I cool moist air at constant pressure, uh, the state gets closer and closer to the saturated vapor line. So, the air becomes more and more humid. The interesting point about this is that I have not added or removed any water vapor. The amount of water vapor remains the same because I am heating at constant pressure. However, the relative humidity changes. So, as I heat it, it becomes drier and as I cool it, it becomes uh, more humid okay? without any change in the amount of water vapor. So, that is very important. So, relative humidity involves both the amount of water vapor as well as the saturation uh, the amount of water vapor, maximum amount that can be present. Okay? So, relative humidity brings in both, okay? not only the amount of water vapor, but the temperature also. So, relative humidity actually brings out the fact that perception of humidity in a colloquial sense depends both on the amount of water vapor as well as the temperature. So, that brings in the effect uh, together. The most important thing is here in this uh, experiment, the water amount of water vapor remains the same. Okay? So, what practical HVAC systems try to do is to heat and cool and humidify and dehumidify air to achieve an ideal combination of temperature and humidity for maximum comfort of the occupants. Okay? So, if you heat the air if required, cool the air if required. Humidify by adding water, dehumidify by cooling the air so that uh, the water vapor condenses out. Okay? Humidification is done by adding steam to the air, dehumidification is done by cooling the air so that the water vapor condenses out. So, this is what HVAC systems do. But in order to do this, you need to know what the temperature is and also what the amount of water vapor in the air is. Okay? That is also so both these quantities have to be measured and monitored continuously so that the room can be room or dwelling or automobile can be maintained the interior can be maintained at a comfortable temperature and humidity level and that is what we are going to see next how that is done is what we are going to see next. <coughs>